So if we want to look at the time behavior, and we know xn plus 1 is a function of xn, and there is the 1, 1 line, we had a series of functions depending upon r. r could be very shallow, r could be a little steeper, r could be still steeper, and r equals 4 is the maximum value of this. And that, of course, is smooth up there, not pointed. What behavior follows? For example, if this is r equals 1 point, excuse me, 0.15, if r is 2, if r is 3, if r is 3.5, and if r is 4, here's four different parabolas. What happens when we iterate these functions and produce the time dynamics? You might be tempted to say similar graphs should produce similar outputs, but that is not the case. What we see here, for very low values of R, we do indeed get equilibrium behavior. And the system goes to a stable equilibrium that is not zero. Now, suppose R is a little bit bigger. R is 2.5, let's say. Now we get this behavior. And what's interesting about this is, number one, it is an oscillation. It's a two-point oscillation. You can think of it as A, B, A, B, A, B. But the B values are constant and the A values are constant and the system is not chaotic. The system is a two-point oscillation between two values. If we increase R a little bit further, we still get an oscillation, not chaos, an oscillation which is a more complex oscillation. Now you see a four-point oscillation, as it were A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, but the A's are all equal, and the B's are all equal, and the C's are all equal, and the D's are all equal, which means that this is an oscillation, a periodic output. It's just a little more complicated. It has four points instead of two. If you increased for R a little bit further, you could actually produce an eight-point oscillation, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H which would then repeat again and again and again, you could produce a 16-point oscillation. And this would continue to double as R increases until at a magic bifurcation point, which is around point, uh, or excuse me, around 3.5, and certainly for values like 3.789, now the output is chaotic. It never repeats. So we have a sequence of bifurcations. And the sequence of bifurcations basically takes us from an equilibrium point, and I mean, of course, a stable equilibrium point, becomes a simple oscillation, and now we are just increasing R, becomes a simple oscillation. Further increase in R produces a complex oscillation, and then further still increases of R produce chaos. And this is interesting because is it an example of what is called a root to chaos? And a root to chaos is a sequence of bifurcations 
that invariably take the form equilibrium, oscillation, complex oscillation, chaos, as that parameter is increased. And yes, the Hastings model, the food chain model that we talked about, has the same property. So this existence of a route to chaos is really very fundamental and important because it says that systems on their way to chaos go through definite way stations. And the way stations get more and more complex in terms of their behavior. The way stations get more complex until a bifurcation is reached. And for r greater than some r0, the result is true chaos.